Yeah. Um, uh, the session I want to present to you is called value-based team management, so as it was just announced. And before we start, I wanted to ask you if I start talking um, very fast or not understandable, don't hesitate to raise your hand and make me repeat it or make me uh, explain it more clear because uh, I'm uh, a little bit nervous right now, which means I'm freaking out totally. <laughs> Therefore, I might speak very, very fast and not understandable. So don't hesitate to interrupt me and, and ask me to repeat or like whatever to make it more clear to you. So, <clears throat> and before um, I'm going to switch to the content part, I want to introduce myself a little to you for you to have a, an understanding. So why am I right person to talk about this topic and uh, actually what the background, what experience I've got to uh, choose this kind of... Uh, uh, theme for the speech. So my name is Marina and I come from Russia. I work at ADCI Solutions Company and I'm in charge of organizational development because I'm really, really passionate about building processes. Actually, f uh, from um, I'm passionate about building something structured out of chaos. That's why building some business processes or whatever uh, like this is something which drives me in life a lot. And so, uh, as I've already told you, I come from Russia, it's a small city called Omsk, which is located 5,600 miles away from here. That's my first time in the U.S., first DrupalCon, and... Oh. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So I'm speaking also for the first time, and this, that makes me even more excited about everything that's going on around, so I'm really, really thankful for you for coming to hear my speech today. And... Uh, <clears throat> During my previous experience, I've, I've been through a lot of team management and team uh, membership uh, uh, experiences, and I'm somehow reinvented myself through all of them in order to have some clear view to the team management process as a whole as a team member and, and as a team leader. So in my local city, I've been managing my own project team. I've been managing the communication department. And then I moved to Moscow to work for one year, and then I was... Uh, responsible for managing the distributed team of 26 people. So can you imagine distributed team for the whole Russia? It was kind of disaster, like seven hours damn difference. So, and all of those experiences may, provided me some, a picture of how it is better to manage people in order to have them satisfied from the experience they got and, and for the team leader to be able to provide such kind of experience. But actually it wasn't always like this. And uh, <clears throat> I wanted to start with the story of my failure. That was the uh, second or third year of university and was my very, very first leadership experience ever. I didn't know anything about values. I didn't know any almost anything about team management itself. I, I was just taught some very, very basics and I was said, you're okay to lead the team. And I said, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm okay. And I wasn't <laughs> completely. And my team didn't perform any results. I was organizing personal meetings, and team meetings, motivational meetings even, but nothing worked. My, my people was just nodding like, yeah, we agree with you, but still didn't do anything. And I was like, I felt really useless in that kind of moment. I didn't know what can I do more to engage the, the, those people, to, to make them feel connected to the project. But uh, even it was a very like, tough experience to me, that was a bright thing in it, that, uh, that was my first touch point of thinking. Uh, how the team management can be approached, how can the team management can be uh, done in a better way. So I started digging deeper from that point uh, in my life, and therefore I chose this topic not randomly. It is something that really drives me a lot, and uh, what I'm going to present to you today is not uh, something you can just read in some book or whatever. It, uh, it is just a compilation of some uh, approaches, some techniques, uh, based on my own personal experience in team management. And uh, it is all very, very connected to the personal values of people in your team. So how can you uh, find out what are the personal values of your team members and how you can align those personal values to the values of your project in order to create a stronger commitment of each and every of your team members. So we will start with a basic flow of team development to have an idea actually what's going on uh, in the team within uh, different uh, stages. And then we will move on and actually talk about values. So how uh, you can uh, intersect the personal values of team members with the project values and with the values of the world. 
And then we will build up uh, a little bit more on the topic of the values and talk about how to become an influential leader yourself. Because uh, um, being a manager and being a leader is the two completely different things. Uh, and finally, I, I will present to you a little, a simple a coaching model of structuring your coaching conversation, which will help you at the first stages to talk to your team members in order to understand their deeper goals, their deeper personal values. Okay? So, uh, the first uh, part of, the, uh, of our session is the stages of team management. So, it was developed, uh, it was created by Bruce Tuckman in 1960s, quite far, far away far ago, but um, I do believe that it's still uh, relevant by now, and when I will explain some stages and the leadership role on each of the stages, maybe you will even find some similarities with your previous experience or with the experience you are living right now. So uh, does anyone know this kind of model, this kind of approach? Uh-huh. Two hands. Great. So you see on the slide... Um, and this uh, stage is very easy to remember. It's forming, storming, norming, and performing. All sounds <laughs> almost the same. Uh, and uh, you see some the fluctuation. Like everything in life, uh, team uh, cycle is always... It's, it's not a stable thing, of course, because it's connected to people. And after a couple of years, uh, the fifth stage adjoining was added because like, uh, it, it felt that, like... Uh, uh, leaders' involvement on the last, very last stage is also needed so to how, somehow uh, make a right conclusion to the experience. So uh, you cannot even read the slide. Just try to imagine you are a leader of a brand new team. So maybe people even don't know each other yet. So uh, you imagine your first team meeting. People not, don't know each other. They don't really understand what they are going to accomplish. They keep very positive and polite to each other because it's something new. They don't feel really confident in themselves in this um, situation. But they're still excited because something, uh, a new chapter of their life is going to happen right now. So what's the role of the leader at this stage? Uh, at first, you should set the very clear rules of how the work is going to be accomplished. Because if you don't do this now, uh, most probably on some further stages like storming, people will not follow any rules and that may cause some problems to you in the, in the future. Here you also should clarify each and everyone's responsibilities, each and everyone's area of their duties because, uh, again, if you don't do this now, um, uh, further on if some unpleasant tasks will appear, no one will, will want to take it and it's pretty understandable. And right away from the very beginning, you start talking about personal values. How exactly are we going to do this? I will, we will talk a little bit uh, later. But uh, just notice that uh, talk about values should start right now. Because uh, if you know the personal values of your team members, if you know what drives your team members, it will be much easier to you to distribute tasks and to allocate people to different parts of your work uh, like in a more efficient way. So forming is quite, uh, quite a short uh, stage usually, and then we move to storming, and here the name says to itself, it's, everything is just unstable, everything is like a storm in the sea. So people um, are overwhelmed with their new responsibilities, they maybe even don't know what to do with all of this, and, uh, but they feel uh, more confident because uh, they just, they already tried to do something, they feel like they know what they're doing. So that makes them push against the boundaries and even challenge your authority as a leader because uh, they are great, you are not anymore. <laughs> because, yeah, this, that can, um, can happen. And uh, if the working approaches of people in your team are different, uh, it may cause conflicts on this, um, because of this. Yeah, what's another can happen at this uh, stage? So if you didn't clarify the goal of the project and the forming stage, they may question the team's goal and resist taking on tasks because of it. So you see there are a lot of obstacles can, uh, can happen on the storming stage and what you're going to do with this. At first, when you just have noticed that something became not stable as it was in the forming stage, you should remind the teams uh, your, the rules you've said before. You just say to them, you know, we're all adults and we all promise to respect those rules, so why why don't you do this? And it's kind of not honest because we all agreed on this before. 
And uh, that is very important for you as a leader to lead by example, because if you don't follow the rules yourself, your team will watch you and they won't do this anyway. So um, for leader, it is very important to uh, follow the rules. You all have said it's quite obvious, but sometimes the leader thinks that, yeah, I'm a leader, I just, <laughs> I'm okay doing whatever I want, but my team should follow the rules. And you also should stay committed to the goal because if your team sees that you don't really believe in the goal you all uh, achieved, uh, you all are achieving together, uh, they will also lose this kind of focus and, uh, and they will question it a lot. Yeah, so you should also manage conflicts if you see you, with any possible means, like with uh, uh, personal meetings or like uh, meeting the team all together, just reduce tension in any possible way. But I believe that you are great in management storming stage. So will you move to norming uh, quite fast? Here, uh, the tough times are almost over, and uh, your team members uh, resolve their differences and try to uh, and start respecting each other. They are able to provide constructive feedback, not just critics right away in your face. Uh, they start in socializing together. And which is great, but you should always uh, keep an eye on it because I had in my experience and people were too friendly to each other and when, then one of them didn't perform and others tend to cover him. So you as a leader don't have a clear picture of what's going on in your project anymore because like, uh, all the team members cover one or two that don't perform and whatever. So it's great if your team got bonded, but uh, don't make it too bonded, let's say, like this. Yeah. What's the role of the leader? Uh, on the storming stage, uh, this, all this uh, unstable situation can happen because the team is dealing with something new, with something uh, uh, unknown before. They're overwhelmed and they don't know how to act properly. They don't see results in the same way. And then on norming, they, you, can, you have your first results and that is a huge for motivating people. And you should... Uh, should totally show your team the first results you, you have and say to them that all we've been through on the, this heavy storming stage is, is not for nothing. We have results and we are on the right track. And uh, be sure, the first result is something that just boosts the performance of your team in, very, um, in a great way. And, uh, but here is again a tricky moment because sometimes it, it's life and it can happen so, uh, that some new difficult task can appear or uh, you should uh, change the direction of your actions or whatever. So it will be again a big difficult task and you should anyway feel, uh, make your team comfortable not to go back to storming stage from this point. So you should still say to them that you know, we have results. Yeah, we need to change it or we need to accomplish something more. But we, you are doing great and just keep making this. Well, <clears throat> performing. That is my favorite stage and you will love it as well. That is a stage where the unicorns live, where the rainbows are everywhere. Everything is just amazing. Your team works really hard. They are all, already started achieving the team's goal. And uh, as you may easily conclude, that you, the role of the leader is to extend this stage as, as long as it's possible because it is the highest efficiency you can get through the all the work, working on the project. And what about the role of the leader? Here you can finally delegate much of your work because no, no one uh, questions your role as a leader anymore. And you can concentrate on development of your team members. It doesn't mean that you didn't, do, didn't need to do this at previous stages. You, did need it to do this on forming and on storming stages and norming, of course. But here you can concentrate on any leadership skills you'd like to develop in yourself, either it's coaching or like um, better delegating stuff or whatever. So it's just, it's just great. You see your, your team is working even without you directly involved in each process. But all good things eventually come to an end and we have a journeying stage and especially if your team got really bonded because of your, all of your efforts, it, they may experience some difficulties in, in the end because the future looks really uncertain. They don't know which step to take on next. And uh, you as a leader should, uh, should manage this, should facilitate the process of keeping them in touch. Because I've, I've been in many teams in my life, with, uh, only with in, with in two of them, 
we have we still have this uh, chats in social media which are still we're still communicating a lot even though we live in different continents right now and doing completely different things uh, we are still uh, <clears throat> communicating, congratulating each other with birthdays and career promotions. And it's really good feeling because we all been through tough experience and now we are really good friends afterwards. And here you, uh, your role as a leader is also help your team to uh, analyze what they've been through, to reinvent themselves somehow, because you are the only one who've been through this particular experience. So there are no more people in the world with whom you can discuss it and know exactly what, what was going on there. So uh, please organize the reflection on what the experience you've got, how uh, your team changed through this experience, and maybe they started to look at things differently. But in our fast-changing world, we don't really have time to do this in the, our daily life, but it's really important. And uh, <clears throat> we are slightly moving to the talk about values, finally. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I wanted to present to you like a small, very simple model that you can see on the slide, three circles of three diff different types of values. It's personal values, companies, here can be also project or organizational values, depending on what leader you are, and the market values. So I personally believe that only uh, having all those three circles intersected, you can have a really ef uh, efficient, amazing project that will satisfy all the stakeholders involved in an organization. So either it's your team members or yourself or your company or the world around. So let's briefly define each of those uh, circles. So personal values, it is a set of fundamental beliefs that drive... Uh, yeah, that drive behavior. And that is very important, that values is something that drive behavior of people. And that means knowing uh, personal values of your team members, it will be much easier for you to understand the particular choices this person made and also to anticipate the further behavior. So because that is something that will be much more clear to you uh, since you know the personal values. And again, it will be easier to dis distribute tasks because you will know what the person is keen on or, or not. <clears throat> then the company's values. So um, oh, why the company needs values? I believe that the company needs values to keep its integrity throughout the years and to fulfill its mission in the end. Because if you not, don't know what you are valuing as a company, you don't know the direction of, of, your, uh, of your business. Uh, and market values is a certain demand that exists on the market. It's a particular need of the world in the moment. Uh, yeah, so having all those three circles intersected will help you to have the big picture of the impact that your project will create in the world and that will uh, impact that your project will uh, make on the team members uh, in your team. So how to apply this model? At first, you start with your project's values or your company's values, depending on what, uh, what the role you have at the moment. Because if you're a CEO of the company or the project manager or director of some department or whatever, you are the only person who knows everything about this project. You are the person who knows uh, what uh, benefits, what values this project generates for your team members, for the company, for the world. So it will be very easy for you as a leader to come up with a list of values that your project or your product generates. When you're done with this, uh, you will move on to market values. And uh, here you may probably need to conduct some kind of research to understand whether your product is needed on the market because if you are doing something that nobody else needs, so there is a question, why are you doing this thing actually? Because no one else, is, uh, no one else needs this. Uh, so, and when you're done with those two stages, you go out to your team and present the results you just get uh, to show them, to present to them uh, the role of your project in the world and in the, your company. And then you need to guide them through the process of their personal values understanding. And by that I mean that <laughs> you can't just go to the person and ask, hey, what's your personal values? And the person will like, have a direct answer. It may be like this, but it's very rare when people really think about their personal values and they can answer this right away. So you should uh, facilitate the process for them to go through self-understanding. 
And but when you will have all those connected, um, it will be a great experience for all uh, involved uh, parties, because yeah, the, your team members will have uh, a clear understanding what the project ha can provide to them, and they will have the clear understanding how their today's action will influence your company and the world tomorrow, and that will create a um, stronger responsibility for their tasks because they will see that if they will call someone today so in two weeks it will appear for the, some you know, contract or whatever and it will influence your company in that way and then for example you will donate for charity from this money this this amount of money and they will see this kind of circumstances of their today's sections uh, you know before uh, before coming, uh, joining ADCI Solutions, I've been working for four years in non-profit organizations. So uh, it is a kind of a big uh, organization. And when I was thinking about it, one part of my responsibilities was uh, to motivate people to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week for free. And then I was thinking, that it's gonna be. It, I think it's it's hard. It's hard job, you know, to motivate people to work for free. But when I, then I joined the commercial company and I thought it would be much easier because people get paid for the job. It's going to be easier to motivate them to work, you know. But it appeared in completely opposite way because uh, sometimes people tend to suppress their personal values for the sake of making money. And it's fine. There are differ different uh, life situations. But I still recommend you to go deeper in that, to ask the person why uh, he or she needs money to understand real reason of it. Because connecting a person to the project uh, based on values as money and based on values uh, as, for example, I don't know, family or uh, harmony or whatever else, is completely different approach of uh, connecting a person to your project. Because if you surround yourself with people who values money, uh, it is not a stable uh, situation in the long-term perspective because if the, those people are offered more money in other companies, they will switch like this, and it's fine because they, they were, that is something that, that they were looking for. But if you connect people by their life values to your project or to your company, they will stay with you even during the hard times, and it will be much more stable, long-lasting company. And you, it, you, Yes, it takes time to find those people. It takes time to get them connected to your company. But you will certainly see how it will benefit you in the long-term perspective. Uh, on the picture, you see my previous team. We, we are all wearing the same hoodies. We look like baseball team, especially if we are, if we are flying somewhere all together, 15 of us. You can see me next to the tallest guy. I used to have red hair that time. Uh, yeah, that was non-profit organization, and we needed to. We had just one year to change all processes in the organization that that ha that have been built for 25 years before, and we wanted to change all of this. And we did understand that we need a clear vision that will unite all those 15 people throughout the whole year to complete this goal. <laughs> And we allocated two days in a row to come up with just one statement that will motivate each and every of us. And uh, after the, those two days, we had a statement which uh, sounded like belief in a better Russia stand to be the change, since we wanted to change everything for the better Russia. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that was just one phrase that motivated all of us to wake up every day and to work hard every day uh, to achieve this vision. And moreover, that should um, that uh, was going that was supposed to motivate not only us 15, but the whole national plenary of our uh, organization, the whole 25 cities and, and people in all of this. And we did, uh, and we did this. We achieved the, uh, our vision by the end of the year. And it was just amazing, and I can't imagine if we if we didn't do this, what would happen. So, don't. Uh, <clears throat> Use your time to to do this, and you, I'm sure that you will see the results of it. Uh, it is just because people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And that is a quote of Simon Sinek, our next hero in our presentation. And he uh, mm, came up with a model called Golden Circle. Has anyone heard about it, maybe? Yeah, good. 
Uh, and before moving on with this, I wanted to ask you first. So in terms of doing something, how do you think what's more important? Why are you doing this? How are you going to achieve it? Or what actually are you doing? So please raise your hands, those who think that why are you doing things is the most important. Yay. Uh, who, who thinks that how are you going to do this is most important? No one. And what are you doing is the most important? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> but I'm, I don't want to disappoint you on this, but you all are wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. But uh, Simon says that you actually need to balance all those three uh, answers. So he, he says that you should apply two principles to this model, and the first one is this balance. Because if you know why are you doing things, um, but you don't do anything, you, can, you don't have a um, physical manifestation of your why, of your reason in the real world, and people don't know what are, what are you as a person. And again, if you're doing something without knowing why are you doing this, it's again some random things which don't reflect, which doesn't reflect yourself. And the second principle is that you should always start from why, in, in that uh, terms you were partially right, because that is the first question you should uh, address to yourself. Why are you doing this? Um, so you should first have a clarity of why, where why is a set of fundamental beliefs, the values, the core values of yourself. Then you should have the discipline of how, where how is a set of actions that you're going to achieve to realize your why. And you should always have the consistency of what, where what is actually uh, the tangible results, the manifestations of your why in the real world. And Simon says that if you have all those questions answered and all those questions in balance, you will become that influential leader because anything you do will reflect yourself. So every action that you will take further on will reflect your personal values. And therefore, people will look at you, will look at what you do, and they will understand whether they want to join you by their values or no. And that will help you to surround yourself with like-minded people. And... Uh, when I knew this model, I looked back and my failure, uh, the example I told you in the very beginning, and I understood that I was, I, when I was organizing this motivational meeting, I never told my people why is this project important to me, and I never asked them why this project is important to them. I was just telling them about what, what we are going to achieve, what benefits they will get, what the numbers are, behind, uh, the, uh, the goal, and so on. Is it, that, that is nothing to do with motivation, you know, because uh, it real, really motiva uh, motivates you from the inside is your personal values, is something that you stand for. So, yeah, maybe if I was, uh, had this talk with my team that time, it, it, it would be different that time. So, again, question to you. Uh, please raise your hands, uh, those who know your why right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to see your hands because uh, sometimes when I ask this question, like uh, one third of the audience raises hands and it's like, uh, I don't know. Because I personally believe that uh, before leading someone somewhere, you need to know where you're going yourself. And it will be very honest to people because if you're leading a team to achieving some goal, the team vision or whatever, but you actually don't know why is it, is it needed for you, it's like it's it's just weird to me. And actually, um, at first, when I started to ask myself this question, it was very difficult to answer. I did sp spend time on it, but uh, when you do this repeatedly all the time, it will become your new habit, and you won't be able to live without it anymore because it will be something natural for you. So when you will make some new choices, it will just come to your mind automatically. It's just amazing. So conscious decisions are the best, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, so I talked a lot today about why is it important to connect your team members to your project by values, but I didn't tell you actually how to understand the per person's values, and now is the time to talk about this. So I wanted to present to you the GROW model. It is a <coughs> simple and elegant uh, model of structuring your coaching conversation uh, created by Sir John Whitmer in 1980s. So yeah, a lot of old models today, but... <laughs> <laughs> they do work, I promise. And the first uh, letter G stands for the goal. 
And when you start your coaching conversation with your coachee, you ask uh, him or her the question, what do you want? Easy. And uh, when the person asked this, answered this question, you should ask one more question, which is, what else do you want? And that will be the source of insights for you about the actual goal of this person, because what's your goal? It's like, yeah, I want a team uh, event management skills. I want the programming skills. Yeah, it's, it's all bullshit. Please tell me, why do you need this, actually? Why do you need project management skills? And that will be a completely different answer. And when you, uh, you're very clear on the goal you're going to achieve, you move to reality. So you have your goal. And you have, you are now here, so you should uh, have a very detailed description of the current situation. Uh, what skills this person have has to achieve the goal? What um, skills this person still lacks? What uh, circumstances will push you to your goal, and what what uh, of them will hold you back? So very very clear uh, understanding of the current situation. And when you're done with this, you move to options. And here is a time for brainstorming. So here you should just describe all possible strategies that you can have to achieve the goal. Uh, anything possible and impossible. So here don't limit yourself in any uh, kind of way. <coughs> and after uh, you, you think that you, you're done with this, you have all possible strategies, you move to will and you choose what will be the most appropriate one out of those you just created. And what's also good about this model is that you can always go back if you feel that you, you lost some ideas from the previous stages, you freely go to the first or second and just discuss it again. For example, if your coachee comes up with the strategies and you feel like uh, this person is some, lost the direction, go back to the goal, discuss it again. Maybe you just didn't do this um, uh, until the end. And then move back to options and further on. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's very important to don't not to forget the difference between teaching and coaching, because uh, in teaching you are the teacher, you have your student, and you are the only source of information, and you are the one who provides the right choices, the right options to the person. And, and in coaching, you are the one not who provides right answers, but you are the one who asks right questions. And that is actually much more difficult uh, than just uh, <clears throat> providing right, this right uh, answers, because you know right answers. It's, it's obvious. You're the leader of the project. You know it. But um, allowing your team members to come up with their own strategy will create a real commitment of, of this person to achieve the strategy, because it is something that he or she created him or herself, uh, not just given from somewhere. So yeah, uh, so that is a very, very simple model you can start uh, up, um, applying even today because uh, yeah, just structure your talk to, your, um, to people in that way and it will, it will be rewarded one day. <laughs> because at, when, actually when I started to use it at first, it was very difficult not to say the right answer. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> now it's working. So, what we've been through today is um, all, all already moving to the conclusion. Uh, so we've got uh, the idea of team development stages that you need to shorten the forming and storming stages as tiny as you can and enlarge the performance stage because that is the peak of the efficiency that you can get out of this team. And... Uh, start talking about values right in the first stage because otherwise uh, you will lose this moment. Uh, then we understood that um, you need to align personal, organizational, and market values in order to create a stronger commitment and uh, to create a long-lasting company surrounded with people who believe what you believe. And then we understood that first you should actually know your own values. <laughs> before leading people somewhere and to become a real influential leader and to reflect uh, yourself uh, to all the activities you're going to accomplish. And we just go through the GROW model and understood how to uh, assess the real personal goals, the real personal values of your team members. Well, so being leader is hard. It is hard. And, you know, it's hard because if you're a leader... You cannot stop being a leader. I'm sorry. 
So we, we're all like people and sometimes we want to relax, don't do things that accurately as we used to because, yeah, we're tired. But you cannot do this anymore, I'm sorry. Because your team is going to watch you all the time and they will copy your behavior because you are the role model for your team members. But even though it's hard, it is rewarding because at, in the end of the project, when you will see how much your team members grew out from the experience you have provided to them, how they changed the opportunities you created for them. It is, I don't know, I, I can't uh, describe this feeling even in my own language, you know, because uh, it is something uh, that I cannot compare to anything. It's just a uh, reward you, I'm sure you will want to get in the end of the project. Because if, if your team members became better than you in some parts of the, pro the processes, you were a great leader. You did a really great job. Don't be afraid that people started to be better than you. It, it, it's uh, not, nothing to compare because you became better as a leader and they became better as professionals. So you work together to achieve the great things. So uh, I wish you to start being a leader today and to see how it will influence your company uh, in future. Uh, yeah, so that is the end of my speech and I'm ready to answer your questions. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yeah, I understand the question. Uh, has everyone heard that? Uh, the, the question was, if uh, the one person has a really negative attitude, no matter what, even though this person has a great skill set. So what to do in this kind of situation? Uh, I had such experiences. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm, um, first, I would recommend actually to talk with this person face to face. And first, very like uh, in polite way. And then this person doesn't understand in a harsh way. <laughs> because sometimes it, it can help. So just tell us directly. So what are you going to achieve by this kind of behavior? And if, uh, if during the conversation you will understand that this person um, mm, uh, is uh, pursuing the other goals uh, completely opposite the, that your team is uh, going to achieve, that uh, maybe uh, it is better to continue without this person because the negative attitude will influence the mood of the team and the team uh, will will not perform as uh, the top even because the attitude I, I believe that the attitude is uh, is more important than the skill set because you can educate people uh, but you cannot change their attitude and other teams they may be uh, the better fit you yeah for me, it's very hard to like fire people or whatever, but sometimes it, it, it's needed for the sake of the team. Any other questions? In, in a situation where, like a large organization where people are asked to do a science project beyond their normal daily duties, <laughs> and so there's really no, you can't like fire the person, you can't get the position off the team, but no one else can fill that hole and need their skill set. It, it's almost said like a non profit example, yeah. except they are getting paid. Any, any thoughts on that or on how to get them motivated? 
why are they doing this project because their boss is signing them? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. The question was that if the person is not motivated, but you cannot uh, fire him or remove them, right? They get your. They okay. Yeah, um, that can happen, and that is. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very uh, I know, difficult situation, but I believe that, uh, again, a very honest talk uh, can help because you, um, you just say the per to the person, I will be completely honest to you. That is the project. That is the situation we all are facing. So let's not, uh, I don't know, spread the negative uh, attitude uh, to anyone and try. let's try to benefit uh, both of us out of this project because anyway, we're all our people and it can happen like this. So if you cannot... Um, uh, if you cannot stop feeling this negative, just please don't show it to the rest of the team because it is not uh, not uh, fair for them because they are really motivated, they want to achieve it, and you're just distracting them from achieving their personal goals. So um, if you don't like the project, don't punish people around you for this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, we have uh, in our current team one person who doesn't like anything. So any activity uh, I suggest, uh, he just doesn't like. And he writes in the common chat, like, yeah, I don't like this activity. Yeah, it sucks. Whatever. And just I, I just wrote to him, like, okay, if you have that negativity, write it to me, <laughs> not to everyone. <laughs> I'm okay to listen to your like negative emotions, but please don't ruin the positive one for all the team. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so if there are no other questions, so I will be here around so you can approach me, I can talk. Uh, you have a question? Yeah, of sure. Yeah, if I get you right, so if the team tends to avoid one one of the person one person of the team, right? Try to not like him, <laughs> right? So I, I had a similar experience in the previous team. So uh, there was one, one girl in the team and the others uh, couldn't find an approach to, to work with her and they tried to uh, um, uh, not to work with her uh, at all. So they, yeah. So I just put them together at one table <laughs> and I had a very strict talk to them because uh, actually I, I just told them that we are here to achieve something great together but you're behaving like a children in the kindergarten you know uh, because uh, actually finding our approach to other people is a part of the team experience and if you're avoiding this experience you are uh, you won't get it anywhere else. So, for example, uh, the, um, the role of this girl was to organize all the logistics for the event. 
Uh, and I said to her that if uh, you are the person who needs to set relationships with other stakeholders to achieve your project's goal, but you cannot set right relations with your team members, and the, the team members also cannot set it, because uh, if you... Uh, how to explain this? Yeah, the, the main idea that the finding the right approach to people is a part of team experience. And if you isolate this from this, you are like you you just missing something out of this experience. Actually, as I was when I was applying to become the vice president for communications in my city uh, back then, uh, everyone told me you are going to work with this president. She is not good. Don't apply. You won't like it. And I was like. What are you talking about? I mean, this is a part of the experience. Even if, even if I don't like it, I don't want to miss this opportunity just because of that. Yeah, and it's actually we are best friends now. <laughs> so it, it happened in a very positive way. Uh, I think yes, because when you get new people, you again start from forming the rest. Uh, uh, I think you should start the cycle for this person from the very beginning. You should uh, uh, you should assess the personal values of this new team uh, new team member, and to understand how the this team this new team member will fit to the current team, because. Uh, yeah, for this person, it will be all very, very fast going. But it, it may also ca cause some conflicts, and it may push your team to the storming stage. And it's, it's, I think it partially starts from the beginning, I guess. Because just one person can make a difference, you know? <laughs> uh, OK, we still have some time. Uh, how to get uh, feedback to me as a leader from the team if they are shy to tell it right away? Uh -huh. uh, we we did the Google Forms, <laughs> anonymous Google Forms. <laughs> so we, but actually, uh, I try to create this kind of uh, atmosphere in the team. But it's it's good to provide feedback because you know there is a uh, several types of providing feedback, and I use the one which call which is called plus delta. Uh, you, say, you first say positive thing, I like you're doing this, but I think you need to improve this in the future. So that feedback doesn't offend anyone, and uh, people are tend to really change according to such a feedback. Of course, if you say you're, you're, you suck in this, <laughs> that kind of feedback is going to be perceived like a critics, and uh, the pe people, or the person won't change out of such a feedback. So, yeah, and my team now, uh, my team members can come to me and say, Marina, what's she doing? <laughs> Please think again. <laughs> And it's completely fine because we have such a like, close relationships, and it's I think it's better for the team. Yeah, but actually uh, there is one uh, when you when you're on storming stage and you see that there is a lot of conflicts in between all the team members, and you cannot do anything, and they conflict with you with each other, and everything goes just a complete disaster. There is a uh, one uh, um, exercise which is called uh, hot chair. And for this exercise, you need to have an external moderator, and you are the one. Uh, you will participate as a part of the team. So you have a chair, and the one person of the team or you sit on this chair, and all the rest provide uh, critics. Let's say like this, because uh, when you are conflicting, you are not able to provide this positive kind of feedback anymore. So, uh, and the moderator should be very good one to have this uh, uh, to uh, achieve the real uh, good outcome out of this exercise. So every person of the team sits on the chair and receives <laughs> the opinion about him or herself. And usually uh, it, it helps to reduce tension because people just put all the negativity away. And uh, usually afterwards everyone cries and everyone thinks like, yeah, we are one team. We, 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 are, we all have our uh, like weak sides, but we are together. Let's do this and so on. But it will depend on the moderator, of course, <laughs> because if the moderator is not that well, you can just finish up. <laughs> without a team at all. <laughs> yeah, and that is a good point, because as I said, at the journey stage is the final one. You should uh, 
have this reflection on the experience you've just got because it's very important to understand what, what actually you've just been through. <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyone else? Okay, if no, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Actually, I didn't have such experience, but I guess uh, it's better to organize this kind of understanding of values on the very first stage and then just uh, have the rules about what the, the next leader uh, the next leader's behavior is going to be uh, be like what's the role I, I don't know. I guess it's all about this the very this particular team and the setting rules on the like, kind of initial stage of how it's, it might be someone else can share about this, yeah. <laughs> 